Okay. So, uh, we are back again right in the previous uh, lecture we started with this example. Uh, so, this your what you call this this is a five bus problem and this x d 1 dash for this general and one transformer is there here and here right two transformers are there. So, previous examples we have not considered the transformers if transformers are there then the transformer reactance will be given in power unit along with that this one you add right. So, we did not make any bus number here actually there is no need right. So, basically it is a 5 bus problem and another thing is for this problem that bus 2 and bus 3 basically they are PV bus whatever it is given that is their load flow solution these two are PV bus that means its voltage magnitude is 1.03 per unit is defined right. Similarly, for bus 3 that V 3 is equal to 1.02 per unit its magnitude is defined right. So, whatever angles you was uh, it is given here this is the load flow solution from the load flow solution right. So, all I mean load flow solutions all everything is shown here right V 5 then your uh, your what you call V 4 right everything is shown here and another 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 point is that your all the all the load impedances are uh, your sorry load power is given we have to convert it to admittances right. So, load power is given and at the same time you have to compute E 1 and E 2 right and this is a this is infinite uh, your what this is a slack bus and uh, this is actually shown by your what you call infinite bus right. So, in this case E 1 is equal to V 1 is equal to 1 angle 0 just to your what you call uh, to uh, simplify the problem because we have to do something which can be solvable in the class and in this case that your R x in power unit for all the three lines are given right, but uh, for the classroom exercise if we take R it will consume more time. So, we will restrict it to your what you call the reactances, but for this example this R and x will be there right. So, E 1 tilde that is phasor quantity is equal to E 1 angle delta 1 and E 2 tilde is equal to E 2 angle delta 2. So, half line charging other data other data are also there right. So, just hold on. So, if we come back to the other data just let me let me make it this thing. So, half line charging that all the line charging is given. So, B 4 5 by 2 that is your uh, charging susceptance right. It is given J 0 0.113 and B 5 I mean half 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 B 5 1 it is J 0 0.098 and half B 4 1 it is J 0 0.041 because half half will take right. And then H 1 is 12 second and H 2 is 9 second the inertia of that two machines right 1 and 2 and transformer for X T 1 that is nothing but X 2 4 it is J 0 0.022 that is this one this one that is x 2 4 that is nothing but x t 1. Similarly, for t 2 transformer t 2 it is x 3 5 right. So, these two are given x t 1 is equal to x 2 uh, your x 2 4 and x t 2 is equal to x 3 5 that is j 0 0.0 all are in per unit right. So, buses 2 and 3 are p v buses right and p g 2 is given 3.25 p g 3 given 2.10 and as 2 and 3 are PV buses after solving this right that Q g 2 is 0 0.6986 and Q g 3 0.3110 right. Now, load flow solution. So, these are the load flow solution for the pre fault condition I mean you have to run the load flow and get, but for the assignment or exam purpose this solution will be given because we know that that exam it is not possible to sub simulate or this that right. So, this this solution will be provided to you. So, V 1 is equal to 1 angle 0 the slack bus, V 2 is 1.03 angle 8.35 degree this bus 2 I told you is a PV bus. So, voltage magnitudes are specified. Similarly, bus 3 also is a PV bus. So, it is 1.02 angle 7.17 degree P u that is PV bus and V 4 and V 5 that is 1.0174 angle 4.32 4 and 5 are P q buses and V 5 1.0112 angle 2.69 degree right these are the load flow solutions. Now, this is given from that we have to find out that before determining the your swing equation we have to find out the swing equation for those two machines. 
So, we have to obtain E 1, E 2 and E 3 right. So, we know that power in that current I 2 will be P 2 minus J Q 2 upon V 2 conjugate right. Uh, because we have to find out E 1, E 2 uh, sorry E 2 and E 3 because E 1 is equal to V 1 is known that is 1 angle 0 right. And therefore, P 2 and Q 2 uh, your all are given. So, all you have got from your load flow solution. So, you can find out what is the current I 2 in the current injection that, uh, that is your at bus 2 that uh, uh, your current injection right I 2. So, it is P 2 at the from load flow studies you have got 3.25 minus J 0 0.6986 upon 1.03 angle minus 8.35 degree right. Uh, so, multiply both sides by x d 1 dash I 2 because if you go back to the diagram right we have to comp this this is actually bus 2 and this is your x d 1 dash right. So, we have to use that equation 9 that is why we are multiplying by x d 1 dash for uh, by I 2 right. So, here your x d 1 I 2 uh, x d 1 dash I 2. So, if you multiply by x d 1 dash I 2 it will be like this and if you simplify all these things you will get your E 2 is equal to your E 2 is equal to that voltage is known 1.03 angle 8.35 degree that is your this uh, voltage your uh, just hold on this voltage that is your V 2 right just hold on this is your V 2. If you come back to this diagram if you come back to this diagram this E 1 tilde I mean this one this one you see that if you come back to this portion right. So, E 1 angle delta 1 right is equal to your this current injection here is I 2. So, your your I 2 into x d I 2 into x d 1 dash plus this V 2 right V 2 is equal to 1.03 angle 8.235 degree. Similarly, if you come to this one actually here also it will be E 2 angle delta 2 is equal to that voltage V 3 this one plus here that current injection is I 3 into x d 2 dash because this is bus 3 right. So, that same philosophy is applied here for computing that. So, here you will get if you simplify this one you will get E 2 is equal to this much right. So, it will come 1.096.3377 it is actually in radian not in degree I have written delta 2 in radian right. Note that your E 1 is equal to 1 angle 0 degree because bus 1 is a slack bus and it is shown infinite bus no x d 1, x d 2 or x d no x d 1 dash there. So, it is E 1 is equal to simply 1 angle 0 degree uh, right or radian whatever it is. Similarly, for I 3 if you calculate it will be P 3 minus J Q 3 upon V 3 conjugate right. So, it is 2.1. So, minus J 0.311. So, it is 1.02 angle minus 7.16 degree that is your I 3 right. So, here also I repeat that E 1 is 1 angle 0 because bus 1 is a slack bus right. And similarly, you multiply x d 3 dash uh, your I 3 right. So, if you come back to this bus 3 right bus 3 same thing here that your this one uh, this one will be make x d 3 just this bus 3. So, that is why make it x d 3 not x d 2 right. So, that uh, symmetry or what you call this uh, with bus number this x d 3 dash this the number 3 will be maintained right. So, it uh, by mistake I have made an x d 2 you make x d 3 dash right. So, otherwise you can keep x 2 also does not matter only calculation should be correct. So, this one this one you when you do that uh, your uh, E 3 uh, that E 3 is equal to your V 3 plus x d 3 I think in general if we put like this right. So, basically it will be your what you call that your whatever it comes say E 3 tilde I can put like this E 3 tilde it is a basically it is a phasor quantity. So, it is 1.071 after simplifying this angle 0 0.3184 radian because delta 3 we have given it as a radian. So, this E 1, E 2 and E 3 easily you can compute if you know the current injection, if you know other parameters and uh, and of course, that pre fault case the load flow solution must be known to you then only you can compute all this right. So, so the 
the loads at buses 4 and 5 are represented by the admittances calculator as follows. This one, this one we have uh, your what you call, we have seen it before that at bus 4 the load is given 1 minus j 0 0.44 divided by the magnitude of uh, magnitude of your uh, v 4 square. This already we have seen for the previous example and this is your load. If you simplify that load admittance will become 0 0.9661 minus j 0 0.4251. Right. Similarly, for bus 5 load is given 0 0.5 minus j 0 0.16 divided by this v 5 square v 5 magnitude. So, 1.0112 square. Right. If you do so, it will be 0 0.4889 minus j 0 0.1564. So, these two load admittances are known. Now, you have to compute the y was matrix for p fault, fault and post fault condition. Right. So, now pre fault bus matrix. Right. So, load admittances along with the transient reactances are used with the tie line and transformer admittances to form the pre fault augmented bus admittance matrix. Right. Which contains the transient reactances of the machine. We will therefore, now designate as bus 2 and 3 the fictitious that is why 1 and 2 that the internal machine things we have not considered probably we are uh, actually making it together. So, we will therefore, now designate as bus 2 and 3 the fictitious internal nodes between the internal voltages and the transient reactances of the machine right. This we will do that means, uh, that means if we go back to the diagram if you go back to the diagram right. here. If you go back to the diagram that that y 2 2 y 2 2 the transformer is actually j 0 0.022 right per unit. So, all this these two things will be added together right. So, you add two and take the reciprocal of that then you will get your y 2 2 right. So, same philosophy will be here also that whatever T 2 reactance is there transformer T 2 will add this one and we will take the reciprocal of that such that we will get say y 3 3 right. So, we will come back to this thing right. So, therefore, y 2 2 will be 1 upon your uh, 0 j j 0 0.06 uh, j 0 0.067 plus the transformer 1 it is coming actually minus j 11.236 right and y 2 4 will be y 4 2 it will be plus j 1 11.236. We know that we calculate no small y 1 1 small y 1 2 like this and capital one whatever it is i j is equal to your minus small y i j this we know right and in diagonal one we just add all the small one. So, diagonal will be always with a negative sign right and uh, your off diagonal one will be minus of so small y, y is minus, so it will be positive sign, right. So, so y 2 4 is equal to y 4 2 you will get j 11.236. Similarly, y 3 3 will come that your this is your j 0 0.04 that is a transformer thing plus that your uh, that x d uh, 3 dash, right. So, it is coming minus j 7.143. So, y 3 5 is equal to y 5 3 5 3 will be j 7.143, right. This you know from the load flow studies how to construct that admittance matrix. So, now when we calculate y 4 4 all should be added, right. So, this is that load admittance then y 4 1 small y 4 1 small y 4 5 then half b 4 1 half b 4 5 by 2 then plus small y 2 4. If you do so, if you do so, so it will be your this is your y l 4 it is marked here this is y 4 1 this is y 4 5 and this is half b 4 1 other things just let me move little bit up right and this is your half b 4 5 that is j 0.113 and this is your uh, minus j 
11.2359 that small y24 right so if you i mean whatever it comes if you add together you will get y44 will be 6.6598 minus j for 44.617 right similarly similarly y y55 you calculate you know how to only thing is that uh, that your uh, load admittance that is we will take as a shunt admittance right that has to be added that is why it is y l 5 it is there we have already computed if you add all you will get y 5 5 will be your 8.9769 minus j 57 point your 2972 this is y 5 5 right and augmented pre fault bus admissions matrix right that is <coughs> so that is your uh, it is a 5 into 5 matrix. So, this is your just hold on let me reduce the size right. So, this is your bus admittance matrix. So, it is a it is a 5 into 5 matrix right and all, all and they are all elements are shown right. This is your pre fault admittance mat matrix right. Next is that bus matrix during fault right. Since the fault is near bus 4, so it must be <coughs> sorry it must be short circuited to ground right it is a three phase fault the y bus during the fault condition would therefore be obtained by deleting the fourth row and fourth column from the above augmented pre fault y bus matrix so bus has occurred that the three phase fault has occurred at bus 4 so what you will do is that three phase fault so this row should be eliminated and this column should be eliminated right so finally it will come down to a your what you call 4 into 4 matrix. So, this element, this element, this element will be retained right. This one, this one, this one and this one will be retained. This one, this one, this one will be retained and this one, this one, this one and this one will be retained. So, this will go all will be 0, 0, 0, all will be 0, 0, 0 during fault right. That means, in general if you want to make say we want to make it as 5 into 5 then in that case this will be 0, this will be 0, 0, 0 this will be 0, 0 and 0 right. So, all these things you have to what you call fourth row and fourth column you have to eliminate. So, so if we do so, if we do so then the reduced fall matrix that during fall right. So, it will be it is actually what happened that it is a reduced fault matrix, reduced fault matrix means that uh, just uh, just I am making it here because all these calculations are not shown then it will be too lengthy right. So, only thing is that you will make this will eliminate this will eliminate right. So, this will not be there. So, ultimately it will be a 4 into 4 matrix right it will be a 4 into 4 matrix right, but you have a 3 machines right. So, in that case you what you will do. So, this will be a 4 into 4 matrix. So, y n n right it will be actually y 3 into 3 right y n n y n r y r n y r r right after that same uh, philosophy that uh, to the uh, y matrix reduction that has been done. So, that is why this uh, reduct this uh, your what you call that y reduce matrix will be 3 into 3 during fault because 3 machines were there. So, we have reduced this one to your 3 into 3 but actually during fault it is 4 into 4 right but y n n n is 3 because number of machine is 3. So, it is 3 into 3 y n n then n r r is 1 right. So, that you are 3 into 1 then 1 into 3 then y r r right only one element. So, if the after that you reduce it that using that formula y n n minus your what you call y n r then y r r inverse into y uh, your what you call r n right. So, after redux reducing this we are getting this one, but it has to be a symmetric your say what you call symmetric matrix it is a symmetric matrix right. So, it is a symmetric matrix that 1 3 3 1 1 2 2 1 and your 1 2 3 1 3 2 right it is a symmetric matrix if you do not get symmetric matrix then somewhere something has gone wrong in the calculation right. So, this is actually reduced fault matrix that is 3 into 3. Now, when fault was cleared that line 4 and 5 that you are what you call that post fault bus matrix that that uh, that is removed. Now, once the fault is cleared by removing the line 
simultaneously opening the circuit breakers at the either ends of the line between buses 4 and 5. That means, you have to reconstruct the y matrix. So, if 4 5 is open or let us say open then y 4 5 will be y 5 4 will be is equal to 0 and accordingly you have to modify the y bus matrix right. So, that means, that you are um, you are uh, subtracting the series admittance of line 4 5 and the capacitive susceptance half of the line from elements y 4 4 and y 5 5. So, this will be changed first thing is y 4 5 is equal to y 5 4 will be 0 and second thing diagonal element y 4 4 and y 5 5 you have to change. So, that is y 4 4 post fault will be y 4 4 pre fault minus y 4 5 minus b 4 5 by 2 whatever it comes that is actually 5.2111 minus j 35.8771 right. Similarly, that y 5 5 post fault you will get 7.5281 minus j 48.5563 right. Now, the reduced uh, your what you call post fall bus is shown in the given thing actually this matrix actually that post fall matrix actually your 5 into 5 matrix right. After that you are reducing this. So, in that case same philosophy you follow that y n n that is 3 into 3 matrix you just partition you just partition and then you reduce it to your 3 into 3 matrix the all these things are not shown because it is little bit lengthy right only I have shown the reduced y bus uh, for the 3 into 3 1 5 it is 5 into 5 then you make it 3 your y n n 3 into 3 y n r 3 into 2 then 2 into 3 and that was y r r it is 2 into 2 right. So, accordingly you just uh, your just you your what you call you just uh, calculate and uh, just uh, and you will get this one right. So, this is your reduced matrix. So, if you look if you look here also that this one and this one y 1 2 y 2 1 it is a symmetric matrix then y 1 3 y 3 1 and y 2 3 and y 3 2 they are all same right. So, it is actually 3 into 3 that reduced matrix because you have a number of machines. So, accordingly you can reduce this one right this already we have seen before. After this after this note that that 0 element appears in second and third rows right. This shows that physically the generators 1 and 2 are not your interconnected where line 4 and 5 is removed. So, if you if you look into that the 0 element appears in second and third rows right. If you look into that this this your y 2 3 and y 3 2 both are 0 right. So, if that means the generators 1 and 2 are not interconnected when 4 and 5 is removed right. So, from that it is, it is some some kind of you know uh, physical interpretation looking at this looking at this matrix right. So, now during fault the power angle equation. So, fault has your what you call P 2 will be is equal to 0 right during fault right because if you go back to this diagram if you go back to the if we go back to this diagram right just hold on here because fault has occurred actually fault has occurred at bus 4 right and this is your generator 1 right. So, basically P 2 will be equal to 0 right. So, just hold on let me go down. here right. So, during uh, just uh, just uh, just amplify this one. Huh? So, P 2 is equal to your 0 right and P 3 that is real of y 3 3 then your E 3 tilde E 3 conjugate plus E 3 tilde then y 3 1 tilde E 1 tilde I mean all are complex quantity and y 3 2 is equal to 0. So, you can real real part of this one will be basically P 3. So, you know all this uh, from your load flow studies right. So, you can easily compute. So, basically it will be E 3 square G 3 3 because real part we are writing plus E 1 E 3 Y 3 1 then cosine delta 3 1 minus theta 3 1 right. Therefore, P 3 is equal to all this value you substitute E 3 1.071 square into G 3 3 0.1362 plus 
your 1 into 1.071 because e 1 is 1 e 3 is this much right and then cosine of delta 3 minus the theta 3 1 will be 97 point your what you call 90.755 degree that is the angle of y 3 1 right. So, that is theta 3 1. So, if that means p e 3 is 0 0.1561 plus 5.531 sin delta 3 minus 0 0.755 degree right. So, now post uh, post fall power angle equation. So, post fall case directly you can write when fault is clear right. So, that is your uh, that you have to use that last matrix 3 into 3 right. So, P 2 E 2 square G 2 2 plus E 1 E 2 Y 2 1 cosine delta 2 1 minus theta 2 1. So, from that you substitute E 2 is 1.096 square plus uh, sorry into 0 0.5005 plus 1 into 1.096 into 7.6321 into cosine delta 2 minus 91.662 degree right. So, if you come back to this right, if you come back to your uh, uh, this one right. So, whenever whenever you will uh, I mean computing this one you please take those uh, your what you call take these values I mean this g values and your b values right whatever it comes. So, in this case in this case your uh, this one it is 7.6321 right whatever it is y 2 1 into your cosine delta 2 minus 91.62 degree that is angle of y 2 1. So, you will get p 2 is equal to 0 0.6012 plus 8.365 sin delta 2 minus 1.662 right. Similarly, when you will make it this one p 3 when you will make it is e 3 square g 3 3 plus e 1 e 3 y 3 1 that is your then cosine delta 3 1 minus your theta 3 1 right. So, in this case you substitute all these values all these values right. So, you will get your what you call that 0 0.1823 plus 6.5282 sin delta 3 minus 0 0.8466. Now, in this case your what you call that your uh, y 3 1 and your y uh, 2 1 or y 1 2 right. So, y 3 1 when you will go to this y 3 1 uh, and y uh, 1 2 you will only take the magnitude of this one because it is magnitude of y right. So, when you do this that you will get this p 3 equation like this right. So, p 2 p 3 equations we have got your post fault condition. Now, swing equation during fault. So, we know that d square delta upon d t square 180 f upon h 2 p m 2 minus p 2 is equal to p 2 is 0 during fault right p 2 is 0. So, it will be 180 f upon h 2 we are writing p a 2 the accelerating power right. So, d square delta upon d t square basically 180 f upon 12 and it is basically 3.25 you go we go back to that your p g 2 right. And similarly, your d square delta 3 upon d t square it is 180 f upon h 3 p m 3 minus p 3 h 1 was 2 h 2 was 12 right and similarly h 3 was 9. So, 180 f upon p m and p m 3 is 2.1 right because we are assuming that it is a lossless uh, turbine right. So, 2.1 and minus p 3 whatever you have computed. So, you will get your d square 3 d square delta 3 upon d t d square delta 3 d t square is equal to 180 f upon 9 into 1.9439 minus 5.531 sin delta 3 minus 0 0.755 degree right and uh, thank you very much we will be back again.